Okay, I'm back. Now, today, I've got something going on with the generator. You can see the heat is running. Um, if you've watched the videos, you've watched me build this, but there's a few additions. If you see right here, let's see if I can focus on it. You'll see a tube coming out of the overhead valve and going into where the fuel line used to go. That's rerouting uh, the air that's getting past the valves inside the valve cover back into the air stream. So there might be a little fuel vapor in that. Here you see another tube that's going into the intake, the fresh air intake. And you can see that fresh air intake's open about halfway. That tube's right in front of the opening. Uh, and it's been running. That tube comes from our bubbler, which we added. You see there is the bubbler. That's the output line. That output line goes through a portioning valve, which is just wide open right now. And um, there's the hydrogen cell. This hydrogen cell, uh, I believe it's two and a half or it might be three inch uh, diameter. I think it's three inch outside diameter, uh, stainless. And it has a normal uh, silver bullet inside of it. So there's one extra tube here. It's a really heavy duty tube. Um, so that uh, does put out a pretty good amount of hydrogen. Not a lot right now, but I've only got it pulling about five amps. Now this amp gauge was the amp gauge that I had in my van, and this amp gauge is notoriously bad at the uh, low amp draw readings. Um, I don't have a good amp meter to put on there, but uh, get one eventually, but for right now we're using that. I'm going to try to pull as many amps as I can because the higher the amp draw, the more accurate that amp gauge is. Um, our hours meter, we're on 17.4. When we started our test, it was 16.8. Um,
you can see there we just our fuel just dropped into the tube so 38 minutes almost 39 minutes on the gate now, I've got the power shut off on the hydrogen cell but there's still enough voltage inside the the cell to uh, push out a little bit more hydrogen uh, so it'll it'll be pumping hydrogen for you know a minute or so and then uh, there won't be enough uh, pressure inside the cell to push air bubbles up into the uh, reservoir so anyway uh, that's the first run on this cell so you know it's gonna it's not electro polished um, I didn't do anything to the cell I just uh, built it put it together cleaned it of course and um, put it in service uh, you can see what I'm using there for electrolyte the uh, Robic medic whatever Robic uh, crystal drain opener 100% uh, sodium hydroxide and uh, you can see I've got my fuel valve shut quite a bit um, I've added this air filter the air filter just to, to cover up the hole uh, there's still plenty of flow through this air filter even though the opening is not very big there's uh, enough flow so that I don't notice um, a draw on the engine at all I don't notice the engine dropping in RPM when I take it off and put it on uh, you can see that I've got pretty much all of my magnets attached to the uh, incoming air with the south facing toward the uh, carburetor I'm trying to magnetize the uh, incoming tube you can see I got a line of magnets there um, and underneath and on the side so anyway I'm trying a little magnetism there uh, I do have an exhaust leak right up here now that uh, has just recently started and I can see that the case has already cracked I don't know if you can see that crack there or not but but my weld has cracked right there and uh, so this will have to come back off and get welded up better but all in all uh, we got a crack over here too you can kind of see it it's hard to see but uh, that's the crack and that's just the weld joints on my caps the caps were pretty thin metal so not much penetration in that weld but it was an experiment the uh, bubbler is working good I did have to do another modification to the bubbler um, not sure if you can see that or not but uh, let me see if I can get you down in there probably not you can kinda see down inside there that there's something different and that what that is is a different type of float that's an actual uh, 8 horse Briggs and Stratton float inside there and um, that allowed me to go to a little bit lower fuel level in the bubbler um, I'm about uh, I'd say I've got almost half as much fuel inside the bubbler now I couldn't go much uh, less fuel on the bubbler uh, because of uh, the temperature inside the bubbler creating too much vapor so I tried to equalize that as much as possible so anyway, that's uh, today's test on...